Oh, what's up everyone? My name is Nigark and welcome to This is the Police where we are starting a new game because that's what we do in the first episode of games. Uh, all right, Freebrig tri Tribune. City Hall confirms rumors of Jack Boyd's resignation. Mayor Rogers, sex maniac? Mark War 2 to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere by the mayor's personal request. Yep, going to work. This is what going to work looks like. It's awfully black. Oh! When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else, though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something, and I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Oh. Good. Oh. Good. Good morning. Yesterday, the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise, or did you know about it in advance? Uh... What's the difference? What does it matter whether it came as a surprise? My business is my own. Do you already know the name of your successor? Uh, no. Of course not, and I don't think the mayor's office knows who it is either. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? Who cares? That's his business, not, not mine. Ask him yourself. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the Mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? I don't know. I've never worked with the Mafia, but I can't speak for every man and woman in the, par the department. I can't follow all my employees around the clock. Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? How should I know? You better ask him. Thank you. You're, you're welcome? I guess? Nosy? How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. Uh. 
As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> Don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and, uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire any time soon. One hundred and eighty days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a, he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? <sighs> I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. Wow. All right. Head of Culture Department owns Villa in Italy. Civil servants' wages won't be raised this year. Jack Boyd, Mayor Rogers is a professional. Yep, that's... Yeah, sure. Was not expecting the sudden sex. Suddenly Cops sex. don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines, or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eaten here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick. He recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Jeez. Oh. Would you like to receive tips about how the game works? Show me what you've got. I'm a 60-year-old police chief of... I'm a 60-year-old police chief a few months away from retirement. I don't need anyone telling me how to do my job. Yeah, show me what you got. 
Freeberg PD organizes the upcoming work assignments into shifts for today and tomorrow. Every shift, officers respond to crimes in progress, and detectives continue their investigations. You can freely move employees between shifts. Alright. All officers and detectives possess several important characteristics. Professionalism shows the overall efficiency level of your police... your policeman. Uh, a figure around 150 is considered average. Any policeman who falls short of this mark is not entirely reliable, while those whose professionalism is considerably higher than average are a safe bet, even in a pinch. An individual's level of professionalism may rise and fall over the course of their career. So that was that number, so he's like way above. Energy shows how tired your policemen are. The less energy your people have, the less reliable their work, and a policeman who is exhausted might fall asleep at the wheel or make a critical error on the job. Your employees lose one point of energy after each working day and restores one point after each day of rest. Your employees don't tell you everything. Some additional characteristics are hidden from view. For instance, some cops are lazy and will come up with any reason that they can think of to take the day off, while others like to drink too much. You can only guess about these things, but you should be able to draw your own conclusions based on the behavior of your employees. Okay, so we have... different... different people here. I mean... I don't get to move them around a whole lot right now. Doesn't do anything, so start the day. SWAT. Aha! Cool! Uh, responding to calls is the bread and butter of police work. You'll need to send your officers to the crime scene before the timer expires. A mark on the map shows where the call came from. The farther away the destination is from the police station, the longer it will take your officers to travel back and forth. So the longer your people will be tied up and unavailable for upcoming work. Click. The easiest way to determine how difficult a task might be is to check how many units you are allowed to send on the call. The more units you can send, the more serious the alleged threat. Particularly risky missions give the option of sending SWAT, but they must be accompanied by at least one officer. But the number of slots is not the only thing to consider. Any available information from the local location of the crime scene to the presence of weapons and so on, all of this can tell you how seriously each case should be taken. A mission might look simple at first glance until it turns out into a brutal meat grinder. Or a serious call can come in which turns out to be a false alarm. Oh, so we've gotta figure it out. Hit and run, a married couple exited a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot back over a homeless man who'd been digging through a trash can. The driver jumped out to help, but got back in the van and quickly left. Once he saw that, he'd hit a bum. Um... We will send... One uh, slightly reliable, like over-reliable, one not as reliable. Well, actually, we'll, we'll have you carry a little bit. We'll have you carry Mr. Austin. Proceed. How's this going? They are off. Oh, there they go. You can see them. That is gorgeous. The last picture show theater. A theater manager reports that during a show of Citizen Kane... What year is this? A drunk man attempted to for... Attempted to force his way into the theater carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theater security guard. Oh. Uh, you and you. Oh, you and you. Oh no, I think you can handle it. You know what, you can handle this by yourself. Most reliable. You've got this, Kochi. I may mispronounce names. I apologize. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else got a uh, got some bad things happening? You're almost there. You're you're dealing with that. Report. When everything goes well, the police capture the criminals and nobody dies. But the fact is, sometimes the criminals manage to escape. But try to avoid any death, dead cops or civilians. Dead cops will hurt your roster, and dead citizens bother the mayor even more than living ones. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Plus 10 on their reliability score. Their professionalism. It's beautiful. And then the strains to show that they're coming back to the station. Fight, report. Offender cut, officer unharmed, civilian unharmed. I knew you could do it, Kochi. Get it, Kochi. Alright, who else, who else wants to step? How do I get money? Armed robbery. 
Three teenagers armed with a shotgun have robbed a videotape store and made off with their whole collection of adult movies. The criminals fled in a car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate. The owner is one Janet Brown, who lives in the suburbs. Well, if they're armed with a freaking shotgun, we're going. We are straight up going. Uh, a brother and sister clashed with each other over their deceased father's will. According to one of their lawyers, we don't dare separate them, and the hospital guard is off-duty tonight. Let's wait for people to get back to the station. And now we can send... Eh, we'll just send you two. Two fairly unreliable people. I don't really care if they get their will sorted out. I mean, it, it sucks, but whatever. Basically. Basically, shut up. Stop fighting over money. You dicks. Oh! Ghetto. Assault in the ghetto. A passerby saw some teenager attack an elderly musician, then run away with his guitar and money. It's in the ghetto. You know what, we're just gonna send both. Both very reliable cops in the ghetto. When your cops aren't sure how to proceed, they might contact you and ask how to handle the situation. Try to deal with whatever comes up, but don't waste all your time on this stuff. You have plenty of other problems on your plate. The vehicle in question is parked right outside the brown residence. The sounds of moans, loud laughter. Sorry, the vehicle in question is parked right outside the brown residence. The sounds of moans, loud laughter can be heard through the living room window. Sneak into the house through an open window. Knock on the door. Open up police. Um, knock on the door, open up, please. Nice, yeah. We didn't want to just sneak into their house because that could lead to terrible, terrible things. That's how people get hurt. And you didn't want to say house is surrounded because it's not. There's only two of you. Report for the fight. Offender escape, officers unharmed. <laughs> yeah, you can't go much lower, can you, Price? At least my uh, uh, officers aren't uh, hurt. Whoa, 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 what? What was that? Who, who flicked the lights? Stop that. Officer Purdy, get back. Oh, this was in the ghetto. Officers unharmed, nice. Boom, Purdy and Kochi doing great work. We've got four people back at the station. Four people doing great. Whoa, 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 whoa. End of the day. End of the day. If you think you'll need a couple of extra hands tomorrow, you can order any cop to come in the next day and work overtime, but if they're working flat out, they'll be much more exhausted. Somebody's bound to make a mistake. So, shift A is these people. Neat. So I could ask, order to work tomorrow? Uh, we have a lot of fairly unreliable people. I would like to have one extra just to be sure. And in fact, let's do like Yancey. Yeah, Yancey, you're coming in tomorrow. So we have a little bit more to work with on that one. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face. The fearless policeman standing helpless in horror? I've known Francis for thirty years. The past twenty years he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. 
And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Says Half Mike. a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Oh. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, San pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. That's brutal. In four weeks, San killed 31 people. Old men, women, even a few teenagers. And San's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Yeah, Commander. Sounds like the dude that does uh, XCOM. Oh, well that's a great spot to wrap it up for the first episode. I hope you're going to enjoy this game. This is the... Oh god, that's going to be a weird wrapping up every time. Because I say this is the game name. But this is This is the Police, and thank you for watching.